Hey GPC family, I welcome you and I also want to remind you that you guys can send me any questions or ideas of topics that you guys would like us to talk about. So my email is carolina at greendalepeoplechurch.org, somewhere right here. So, I have Red Talk with me again. Hello, Red. Mm, buenos dias. No, it's actually tardes now. Yeah. See, it's good to be back in the interrogation room. I will probably not have to confess to any murders today because I've been living a good, clean life, Carolina. <laughs> but uh, it's good to be back on, on another Wednesday with all the people out there. She, she's... See, this, we, we could have this, like, bad cop, good cop, too. Yeah, you know, so. I think so. <laughs> okay, let's All get right. into business. We get serious. So, um, the other day I was actually talking to a friend who, she is kind of like a new Christian. Mm -hmm. And she is very interested about uh, reading the Bible and studying the Bible. Good. Right? So, um, she was telling me that it feels intimidated to start by herself. Sure. So the Bible has 66 books, and Correct. many of the, those books they talk about. It has a lot of symbolism and prophecies. Mm -hmm. And um, so, what would be the best way to start? Uh, do we need to? Is, is there a better translation or better version? Well, the, the, there are so many different translations. Uh, one of the things that you can do is, uh, there's, there's a, a website, BibleGateway.com, BibleGateway.com. Mm -hmm. uh, you can look up passages there and you will get, you can scroll down and, and use any number of different translations. And you can even use different languages. So um, sometimes I will read, I will read the passage in Spanish even. So, because it speaks to me different, because I, I have to use different parts of my brain. But um, I, I would stay away from the, the older ones, like the King James the King Version. James, That's yeah. like 500 years old, so the language is way outdated yeah. and it's awkward. Um, what I always use is the New Revised Standard Version, New Revised, NRSV. The only drawback to that is it is written at an 11th grade reading level. Believe it or not, they, they have different reading levels for the different translations. Mm -hmm. The New International Version is quite popular, and that's written at more of a seventh grade reading level. That doesn't, it, it, you'd still be surprised how many big words there are in there, yeah. but, but the, the NRSV doesn't read as easily. Mm -hmm. Now, some people in our church like to use the message and there's nothing wrong with that, but it really is a, a couple of steps away from probably getting the original sense of what was written by the writers hundreds, thousands of years ago. Yeah. But it's it's in language that's a little more understandable. So um, so that's a good one too. But I would I, I, New International Version is not a bad place to start uh, for for those if, if they want to read. Uh, uh, a translation that you know uh, isn't real difficult. So, um, should we start collecting like a specific passage? I wouldn't start at Genesis and work your way through. Yeah. Some people do that, and they eventually give up after a while. Mm -hmm. um, I also would not uh, uh, start with the Gospel of Matthew because the first chapter is all about this person begat this person who was the father of this person, and it just gets. Kind of lost, but um, you know, I, I think the Gospel of Mark might be a good place for people to start. Or the Gospel of John what? is not a place. Well, the Gospel of Mark, um, it's it's fast moving. It, um, it 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 starts out right away, so it's not like there's a lot of wasted time. It's like you <laughs> you go to chapter one, verse one, and it's like you're right in the thick of of Jesus' life. I mean, right away. Yeah. The Gospel of John may be a little bit more. Uh, challenging to start with because if you want to talk about symbolism and certain ideas that might be foreign to a 21st century person, so let's start with the Gospel of Mark and see how that goes. And, um, so w w one of the things that you can do, okay, um, and I would advise mm -hmm. for people who want to start learning the Bible, um, is to get something like what I have here. This was 
given to me at my ordination uh, long, long, long ago. And so you can see it's been, it's been, it's been around. It's been around for a while. So, but this is called the New Oxford Annotated Bible. And the nice thing about this is that at the beginning of every, so let's go to Mark, for example. At the very beginning, there's a long full page introduction to the gospel. So that's helpful because th this gives you kind of the background. It gives yeah. you, it, it, it prepares you. It's like, yeah. it's like a, uh, if for a movie, if we're seeing the trailer, mm -hmm. you kind of know what the movie's going to be about and that kind of thing. So a good study Bible will, will have that for you. So you can look for study Bibles, oh, and they'll have an introduction. Yeah. And then see, now you turn to the first page, and you've got Mark chapter 1. And a good study Bible will have at the bottom usually notes that will help you understand certain kind of um, uh, difficult things or things that might be a little confusing. So the notes down here at the bottom give you some understanding of what's going on up here. So if you're just going to read it on your own, uh, a Bible like this is, is very helpful. They're a little more expensive because you're paying for the people who write all these things, but it helps you uh, work your way through it and, and answer some confusing questions. That's very good. Um, is it good to take notes or to highlight passages? Uh, yeah, they, you know, they're, they're, there's nothing um, blasphemous or, or evil about yeah. writing in your Bible. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you want to highlight and write notes in it, that's fine too. Um, you know, one of the things. So when I when I learned the Bible at seminary, okay, now this is an academic setting. Mm -hmm. It's a different kind of way of reading the Bible. Academic study. Um, you learn, first you have to learn Greek, and you have to learn Hebrew, because they want you to read the original before you read it in English. That's academic. Nobody does that anymore, but um, that's, that's academic study. And now the academic study would also be like, you wanna know all the background, you wanna know the history, and those kind of things. And that's helpful, and the introductions can, can help you with that. But here's one of the things I wanna say, Carolina, and I would suggest to the people out there, it's one of the ways that I read the Bible, is something called suspend, suspension of disbelief. That, that's a term used actually in the movie uh, industry. Suspension of disbelief is, is you know, you and I, get, we, we're gonna, I'm gonna take my wife Gail, you're gonna take your husband Andrea, we're gonna go see Star Wars. We suspend our disbelief. In other words, we go and we sit down in the movie theater and we're not worried about, can that rocket ship really travel that way? Do Wookiees, are there really such things as Wookiees? No, you just set aside all your disbeliefs, you set aside all those things that are distraction and you just watch the movie and you enjoy it. You, 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 you enter into Luke Skywalker and Princess Leia and Han Solo and Chewbacca and you get to know these characters and you don't ask questions like, well, is, is uh, Chewbacca 30 years old or is he only 10? And I don't believe that there's such a thing as the Force and this and No, you just enjoy it. You don't doubt, you don't question, you just enjoy it. And when I go to the Bible, um, I, I, I suspend my disbelief and I just take it for what it is and enjoy reading it. And then afterwards I can think about it a little bit more. Just as, as you drive away from the movie theater, you think about, wow, that was yeah. a great movie. And, you know, I can't, I don't know how they can build a Death Star that big, you know, and you start to doubt and that kind of thing. But while you're actually there, you just enjoy it. And to read the Bible that way I, it is helpful for me. And it helps me prepare to preach the sermon in a way that might connect better with people. Mm -hmm. so, so suspend your disbelief, get a study Bible. So. Very good. Okay. Um, is it a good idea to schedule time of like a once a week for self-study mm -hmm. twice a week? I don't know. Well, I think that will, will vary from person to person. Um, I'm a morning person. I think I'm, I'm I, I can actually, uh, 
I, I study better in the morning. So um, if, if I'm going to really like get into the, the, the Bible in order to prepare for a sermon or to learn more about the Bible, I do it better in the morning. Um, I, I, I think, I, think I, I wouldn't go more than a week between the times you study the Bible if you really want to learn yeah, it. Yeah. So any number of people have often said, wow, I'm just amazed how well you know the Bible, Doug. And um, I, what I want to say, but I don't, is, well, you wouldn't be so amazed at how much I know the Bible if you knew how hard I'd studied for as long as I have. So you, you're going to get out of it what you put into it. And so it's not that I was born with this vast knowledge. I, I worked at it. And so if you're not working at it with some regularity, you probably won't learn. Yes, yeah. Um, I remember when we were talking about prayer. Mm -hmm. um, so what I start, I started doing is to set up uh, an alarm in the morning to remind me. Oh yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, so I've been doing that. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you another question. Yeah. Uh, this is a bonus one. <laughs> do when you're preparing for your sermon, yeah. sometimes do you go to the original versions before going to the translation? Uh, I, I, I almost never use, um, go read, read the Greek or read the Hebrew. I, I think it's very rare. Maybe a word or two might make me curious yes. and I want to know, so what was that word in Greek or what was that word in, in Hebrew? And you can go, again, you can just go on the internet and you can Google these kind of things and you can get those words and you get a sense of what the what uh, they meant originally. And then it's interesting to see how different translations translate that word. Yes. And you're like, wow, I wonder why they chose that word. So, um, but I try not to get too bogged down in the words. Um, I, I, I'm more into the story uh, of what's going on in the Bible. So, um, than I am in why this word. So, um, so I don't read a whole lot of that yeah. original stuff now. Um, you know, they said when we were learning, you, you, if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. Well, I've kind of lost a lot of it <laughs> at, this, at this ripe old age, but I can still, I can still read um, and understand the words. Yes, yes. And so when we're reading the Bible, um, what if there are still stuff that we don't understand, symbolism that we don't understand, we have questions, what do we do? Well, you know, it's 2021, and so Google's a real good thing. You know, when, when I first started in the early 1990s doing this, uh, I would spend a day or two at the library, you know, and I'd look through those index cards, and I would go to the, 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 the book racks, and I'd pull things off, and I'd spend a whole day there. And now I can just sit at the computer, type a few things in, click, Next thing I know, these things pop up, and good stuff pops up, and so so that's a good thing to do. So if you're if you're, for example, um, in uh, well, the Book of Revelation is some people find very that there's a lot of symbolism and yes. there's a lot of difficult yes. things. Um, so you you know you can Google that. You can Google the passage. So like Revelation seven seventeen, just. Google that and see what pops up and some good things do. Back in the day, um, and I still have some, I've thrown away most of my old commentaries. Commentaries are books. Uh, so I could have a commentary on the book of Hebrews. And I would go to Hebrews. In fact, I'm using one for this week because that's, that's the text of the sermon. And you know, you get a long explanation of it. So there are books available, but Google can sometimes save you a lot of time. Um, yeah, you can you know you can ask a pastor, but uh, most pastors uh, probably wouldn't know a whole lot more than than you would believe it or not. Uh, they would have to Google it too. So, um, what about joining a Bible study? Is that a good idea? Yeah, uh, Bible studies can be good. Um, so, I think there there might even be some online ones that because I know some people have used online Bible studies. Yeah. Um, so, and most local churches will have some kind of Bible study, and it's a, it's good to have a conversation about a passage and listen to what people yeah, have to sure say about thoughts. It. Yeah, yeah, and so um, 
And that's okay. And, and again, you know, you've heard me say it with prayer and other things. People don't, don't just chill out. You know, don't 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 get too uptight and worried about it. Um, I had a professor in seminary who said. The Bible can't mean anything to you that it didn't mean to the person who wrote it. And I'm thinking, how can I go back 2,000 years and know exactly what this person meant and so that I, 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 I read this passage exactly the way I'm supposed to, perfectly? It's like, you know, that, 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 that's a no-win. That's like, how, how can you know everything? So you just allow yourself to, to, to think about it and hear what maybe God has to say or from your own experience or maybe what the notes have to say too. That's okay. okay, thank you. And I hope all of these tips are very helpful for you guys and for anyone who is out there uh, thinking about reading the Bible. Very good. Okay, well, thank you for uh, putting this together, Carolina. I hope everybody, you suspend your disbelief and just enjoy it and take it in for what it is. Um, it's a lot of fun when you do it that way. Yeah. And I want to remind you guys that we at Radio People's Church, we have two Bible studies. One is Women at the Well. It's the second and fourth Monday of the month at 10.30 a.m. at here at the church. And the other Bible study we have is on Wednesdays, every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. in the library, the church library. Very good. Okay. So, toodaloo. Yeah. Take care and see you next time. Bye bye. Bye now.